I grew up on the Central Coast. It's a little town in between Sydney and Newcastle called Avoca Beach. And I was there until I was about 25 and made the move up north to the Gold Coast. Been on the cold Gold Coast now for five years. Posted up at Kingscliff, bought a house and trying to live the dream. Central Coast is a pretty small town and I felt like I was traveling a lot and it was a mission to get to the airport and just wanted to make life a bit more easier for myself so the Gold Coast had everything I needed. I could train, fly, surf, fish. Yeah, when you're competing you're always judging yourself against other surfers and the Gold Coast has so many surfers and so much variety so I was always trying to push myself, see how I go against everyone else and always compare yourself against everybody so it is a good place to grow and get better and it had all the facilities for me to train and get fit and strong and try not to get injured so uh, yeah just a couple of moves just to try and improve your surfing. Uh, my old man just pushed me in before school, after school, I used to ride down with my brother. Just you know, the only thing my family usually done on the weekends was go to the beach. So we just go to the beach and paddle out there, get smashed, get pushed in by dad, and then it just kind of grew from there. Did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I played heaps of sports, mainly footy. I loved other sports, but I got to the point in all everything that I'd done. I wanted to stop doing and just surf, so it was a pretty easy decision to start dropping sports and full focus into surfing and my parents supported it too, so that's what I wanted to do. NRL mate, footy, hard impact tackles, going hard, getting the, getting the ball across the line, that's all we, all we, got, all we call footy around our parts. The Mighty Knights, much love. I was, I was deep in my career. Uh, I always worked and surfed and I knew I loved it. I never really knew how good I was. Um, when you like win comps or get results, that was always confidence building and always felt good, but because there's so many surfers and you lose so much in surfing too, it's hard to know how good you are and not having any sponsors didn't help either. Um, but after like working a bunch and competing a bunch and then everything kind of grows and figure out the system and start making some money and paying the bills and once I moved to the Gold Coast the first time when I was 18 just trying to surf good waves and get better, kind of living out of your own pocket puts it all in a place and you can figure out how much money shit costs and what you need to do to survive, so just kind of grew from there and then once you become a part of the team at Rusty and start getting that kind of team aspect going in and a part of the company, that's when it kind of all started settling out and that's when I would say that was my career starting. Uh, well, at the start it was always prize money, so it would give me the fire to try and win contests. That was always the peak to, to max out the coin. Always get as much as you can if you win. If you're not winning, I was always going home to lifeguarding, working with my brother uh, as a labourer, trying to build houses and decks, washing dishes. It's kind of whatever you could do to get money. A bit of landscaping, surf shop work. I always wanted to keep surfing. I never wanted to fully get, get the tools and not be able to surf, so my whole intention in life was as much surfing as possible and get a job that allows you to do that. Yeah, I moved up to the Gold Coast a few times. I went up when I was 18, fresh out of home, fresh out of school. Uh, That's when I was working and just training, surfing, competing pretty little because I didn't have much money, so I had to really pick and choose your comps. And then I ran out of money, went back to mum and dad's house, had a few more years back there and then saved up money, uh, got some comp wins and 
had a bit, a bit more flexibility with my coin, so moved back up, started renting again, and then that's when I locked myself in after that and haven't, haven't gone back home yet. Ended up being four years, including COVID, three years competing. Oh, there's so many, but there's so many places that I've been and it's a beautiful place, but no, no waves or it's when you go somewhere on a trip and you get good waves, there's good people, good weather and it all comes together. That, them ones are really memorable. And I've had a bunch all over the world. Tahiti, J-Bay, Indo, Mexico, America, beautiful places all around the world. You just got to connect and get that magic trip that happens because sometimes you travel places and get absolutely skunked. Yeah, the vibe of the town always factors into your experience. Some places have really good energy, like you go to J-Bay and the locals are just froth in and the food's really good and it's, you have slow mornings, it's always onshore early, so you have a good coffee, watch the sun come up and everyone's frothing and then by the time it gets to like 9, 10 o'clock, the wind's going offshore and the waves get so clean and look so good and you're already fueled up, had a good brekkie, you're not like waking up at the crack of dawn, just like hoping it's gonna get the first light out there for to get an uncrowded session. Things like that, like you don't get to do that at home, so like we always gotta try to find that offshore first light, then it might come up at nine o'clock, so. Different places, different vibes in all of them. Indo's different, you can just get offshores and clean glass, glassy conditions all day and just big blue perfect waves. And then you go to somewhere like Brazil and you go to this like tropical island with coconuts falling off the palm trees and green grass, but it's just like little two foot beaches that are just left and right peaks and it's just super fun. So you can have a good time everywhere. You just gotta enjoy how the locals do it. Yeah, some places are just a mission, especially from Oz. We gotta travel multiple planes to get to certain places and time for reward doesn't really meet up, but if you have a lot of time, then it's not a problem. You can get through all that and go there, but sometimes time's an issue for us as we've got a busy schedule. So uh, yeah, I'd say it wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't be a thing of never going back again. It'll just be how much time you got and how you utilize that time. Yeah, yeah, heaps. The island one was definitely uh, a success story <laughs> or a successful trip. Another one was in Tahiti. Fly in, it's like a two lane road on an atoll and the plane has nowhere to go. It's either water either side or the runway. And it's like this tiny little island. Drive around, just fishing, fishing town and fishing boats everywhere. And you go to this one little pass and there's a perfect right hand point or barrel and it just barrels from top to bottom. Never seen any footage of it, never seen anything, just heard it was good, there was gonna be a comp there. I remember rocking up with like 15 of the Aussie crew and it was just pumping. And we were just like, how did we end up here at a perfect right hand barrel and there's no one around and this town's like, it's, it was one street, there's houses on both sides and lake on the inside, ocean on the other side. And it was just tiny and we had to walk all the way along there to get perfect barrels. It was about seven, eight years ago. No, this is a whole separate uh, island. Well, it's called an atoll. Rangiroa, the wave's called. And it was just mind blowing. Yeah, a few like. Yeah, yeah. Friendly locals, man. <laughs> Uh, just a couple of buddies, Thomas Woods, um, James Woods, I think Ryan Callan was on the trip too. We stayed at this like sick little shack right in the water. He took us fishing and we caught some yellowfin tuna and it was just walk from our house to the beach and all we could really eat or communicate with the locals and was to get baguettes. We had bread and that was it and got barreled for a week straight. <laughs> I'll just say be true to yourself and if you love surfing just keep surfing. I had so much joy and passion to get better at surfing and to surf every day. 
that's what like fueled me along through all the hard times and the slow times. I couldn't have th thought of anything else I wanted to do than would to like get in a wetsuit on your boardies and go surf every day. That's the dream to me. So I'm grateful I get to do it and just put everything I had into it. Couldn't think of anything else. Yeah, I just wanted to keep surfing. So I backed that, I backed myself. Every dollar I earned, I put it back into myself to go surfing, to go to different spots. Traveling helped me grow as a person and surfing a lot. I feel like get out there, like don't just stay at home and surf your local waves. You gotta go surf all these variety of waves. They make you surf so much better when you have all this knowledge of how different waves break and how to do turns in different sections, how to take off late, barrels, all that stuff. Everything help, makes you a better surfer, a better person. So just keep working on it and keep going. Taking a quiver away with you is hard because it always all depends on where you're going, what waves you're surfing. If say I'm going to somewhere like Mexico, I want thinner, then I'd usually ride on a normal beach break, maybe a bit more refined, uh, just to push harder, more speed in the pocket. It's, they're really curvy waves when it's barreling, so you want to be able to fit into that. But then when it gets smaller, it might get a bit fatter, so that board might not go so good. So I'll go down to like a blade, it has more thickness, more width, glides over the fat sections quicker. And then if it stays small for a couple of days of your trip, I would probably take the 421 with me as well, which is like a fish quad. Just makes life easier for you. You can always have fun on that board. You go the other way and get a step up in your quiver as well, just to have a bit more safety, comfort when the swell gets bigger or you want to surf bigger waves. Uh, you, you try and cover the whole uh, criteria of where you're going. Indo, I would take purely all high performance boards. The keg is gonna come with me in heaps of varieties from a step up to a round tail, to a swallow tail, to a rounded square, and then probably a blade will be jumped in there as well, and that's about it. It's kind of, it seems like when I was with you on tour, you, you this board basically from 30,000 feet was the same board and there was just minor tweaks that you would make with it. You kind of run me through the idea of having one board that kind of does everything and you just have with your shaper minor tweaks, whether it's bring the tail in, stretch it slightly, uh, rocker it uh, or flatten it. Like, but the, the overall profile is the same. Like how, do you kind of, how did you come to kind of run that? Well, the, cr creating the keg was all about, I wanted to surf it in these conditions all the way to these conditions. So we, the whole tweaking stage of it was hard because and there were so many versions of building it up and, t and tweaking little things is because I just wanted a ball I could surf, grab and go surf. There's been so many times in my career where you get this like thing called head noise about surfboards and board confusion and then like coaches will tell you like how's that board feeling or you're just not quite sure because boards like they change in your head all the time and you, you have a magic surfboard and you go have a shit surf and you think the surfboard's shit. People get really like locked in and get heaps hell bent on just like these surfboards. So I wanted to just make like make it simple stupid, make a board that does it all. I can cut that whole thing out of my career and just be happy, content and know exactly what the board does. So design on that, that's why there's a bit, bit, bit more width, a bit wider, and it's catered to, to me, like I've designed it to, for my surfing, how I surf small waves, how I'll surf a four foot point break, how I'll surf a slab, and how I'll surf a six to eight foot open face wall. Uh, the one off the shelf, the, if you grab a keg off the shelf, it's going to go good from a one foot beachy all the way to four to six foot beachy point break. Um, it's, it loves going fast, it loves being on rail, and it paddles good because it's got a bit of extra beef. So it should take all the boxes for you and it should get the job done. It does for me, I love it, I surf it in everything. It's just like I said, the only time I'll change would be when I go a bit smaller and want to have some fun. I like keeping my board in the water, so I would go like the big set of la uh, large John Johns. They just bite, they hold, you can 
push as hard as you want off the tail. Boards aren't going to fly away. I remember watching Geordie do turns and just seeing him push as hard as he can and never having his board come out of the water and that was a bit of a factor into my design and to the care guy. I just wanted to stay in and hold and push all the way through so get the largest in there and push hard. Yeah, it just was a simple um, talk to my shaper, get an inch or two longer. Even I ride it all the way up to 6.4 without changing anything. Same, dragging it out from a 6.0 to a 6.4, like it gets a little bit wider and a bit thicker and more volume. But I would ride the keg from 6.0 to 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4 .6 and just according to the wave size and just go all the way up. I can ride a 6.4 in as big as the ocean can handle usually. Right now I'm running a 6.0, 32 and a half litre swallowtail keg. That was what I brought over for the points in Mexico. So I was always going to be around that head high kind of waves. And it loved it. Ate it up, went fast and held in exactly like I wanted. Yeah, I found with the rounded square, it's a kind of a good base for everything. For when I was competing especially, um, it loved it in all conditions and it held great. But I could, I could get more release when it was smaller with a rounded square. Now off to a not competing, I can kind of have a bit more freedom so I can change my boards more regularly. And that's why I went to the Swallow because I got that extra bite in, the, in my calves and off the bottom or when I wanted to bang the lip or something, you could, you just had that kind of that grunt in the, in the tail, they're really sharp, got the really sharp edges so it's, you really feel that when you're pushing through the tail. Um, I would probably say it doesn't go as good when it's smaller just because it's a bit stiffer, but that's when I'll just change it up and go to the blade. <laughs>